Johnson Wax Program with Trevor McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Who Cares? If things just didn't wear out, we wouldn't have so many little problems right now. When your one and only electric toaster or vacuum cleaner goes out of commission now, it's a serious matter. It really pays to take extra good care of everything you have. Now, the best way to do this is by using things properly and, of course, keeping them serviced and oiled and cleaned. Many things you can protect simply by applying a coat of Johnson's Wax. Your floors, furniture, and woodwork, for example, are actually safeguarded against wear and against dirt with a tough coat of wax. Likewise, your window sills, Venetian blinds, leather goods, and enameled surfaces. Most housekeepers know that the shield of wax also gives rich beauty to these surfaces and saves many hours of cleaning and housework. But today, when conservation is so important, the protection which Johnson's Wax offers is its number one contribution. As we visit Wistful Vista tonight, we find our friend... One shy there, Sonny, one shy. Hey, what's your hurry? Who do you want to see? Pepper McGee and Molly. <laughs> hey, kids, leave me in. Open up there, kids. Mr. Old Timer, what on earth is the matter? Leave me in, kids, leave me in. Hey, what is this anyway, Halloween? <laughs> You've got to hide me, Johnny. They're after me. Well, I'll give you a hiding, all right. What's the idea of beating our front door into kindling wood? You mean kindling. I said kindling, didn't I? <laughs> Come on, kids, please. This ain't any time for even a good joke. Hide me someplace. Now, now, now. Calm yourself, Mr. Oldtimer. We won't let anybody hurt you. Who's after you? The cops. The FBI, everybody, they're all after me. Oh they catch me, I'll go to prison for a hundred years. Well, when we come to see you, will you introduce me to Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> oh, daughter, daughter, daughter. I ain't fooling. You gotta hide me, I tell you, I'm a fugitive. Well, quit fidgeting, fugitive. <laughs> What's this all about? You must have done something pretty serious. Yes, the FBI doesn't chase people for matching nickels. I know it, kids, I know it. I got it coming to me. I never should have done it. Oh, my. No, I've always been a good boy. I guess I'm just a weak character. Yeah, and this is your last weak character if you don't start talking. <laughs> what did you do? I didn't realize what I was doing was so bad, Johnny. First time I noticed I was being followed was this afternoon. I was on my way to the dentist. And dreading it, too. Why? And he says I gotta have braces on my teeth. <laughs> so when I started for home. I thought you were going to the dentist. I was, but I had to go home and get my teeth, didn't I? <laughs> well, sir, I see the fellow behind me. Hooked like an FBI man. How can you tell an FBI man when you see him? Well, he was wearing a Hoover collar and, uh. uh... <laughs> oh, crime kids, here they are. Hide me. Get me out of sight. Okay, okay. Get behind the dashboard. Hurry now, hurry. Pull your feet in. There, that's it. It'll be kind of hard to explain two people with six feet. We're putting ourselves in a bad spot, Molly. You know that, don't you? We're accessories. So what's an accessory? A bumper is an accessory. And what's a bumper for? To take the bumps. Now, if we can't take a few bumps for a friend... Come in! Oh, it's, it's Mrs. Uppington. You don't know how glad we are to see you, Abby. Oh, how do you do, my dear? I'm Miss McGee. Uh, hi, Uppy. You and exactly who we were... I mean, uh, we thought somebody else was... <laughs> How's everything, Uppy? <laughs> Splendid, just splendid, Mr. McGee. I thought I just... Uh... <laughs> Mr. McGee, 
do have to do that. Do what, Abigail? What's he doing? Chewing his necktie. Oh, no. <laughs> That's just a habit I got, Uppy. <laughs> always chew my necktie when I get ner- uh, when I think about something. <laughs> yeah. He always does that, Abigail. Yeah. I tried to break him of it by making him wear bow ties, but he kept spraining his neck to get at them. <laughs> <laughs> Have a chair, Uppy. Yes, thank you. I, I'll just sit over here on the Davenport. No, oh. no, not there, Abby. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Well, the, the, the Davenport is broken, Abby. The spring's busted. <laughs> Liable to get stabbed. I mean, uh... <laughs> here, sit over here. But your hat is on that chair, Miss McGee. That isn't his hat. That's a straw hat, and McGee always wears it. <clears throat> or is that your hat? Oh, I sure. That's my hat. I just bought it this morning. <laughs> oh, really? Well, this fresh autumn air really turns them yellow in no time, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, he bought it secondhand. He never wears a straw hat past the middle of November anyway. <laughs> what can we do for you, Abigail? Well, I just dropped in, my dear, to see if... <laughs> Good hitting. Was that a sneeze? Must be that darn cat that keeps coming in here. <laughs> kitty, kitty, kitty. Where are you, kitty? Meow. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Poor little thing has a cold. Now, what were you saying, Abigail? Well, I just wanted to know, my dear, if you would go down to the federal building with me. I want to see the FBI. Oh, heavenly days. That cat has knocked over the lamp. Doggone you, old time cat. Can't you be a little more careful? <laughs> What are you going to see the FBI about, Uppy? Find a German spy in your sauerkraut? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, Mr. McGee, I want to register my fingerprints in their voluntary civilian files. My brother in Washington suggested it. Oh, you've got a brother in Washington? What does he do? He's a lobbyist. Oh, oh. we don't care where he sleeps. What does he do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't quite know, my dear. It has something to do with the farm lobby. I believe he's a rainmaker. A rainmaker, bosh. A likely story. Nobody can make rain. Well, possibly not, Mr. McGee. All I know is what people tell me. They say he's been under a cloud for some time. But I'm sorry, you can't come with me. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, Mr. Oldtimer, you can come out now. Uh, I'm sorry about that lamp, kids, but I was getting a crab in my leg under the Davenport. Hey, why can't I hide in here next to you? No, no, you can't hide in there. No, no, don't open that door. Why not, kid? Seems like this would be a perfect no. place to... Oh, I see what you mean. Old-timer, we're your friends, and we'll go to bat for you up to a point. Yes, yeah, so let's get to the point. Okay, kids, but I hate to tell you, if I go to Leavenworth, it's <coughs> going to break Mama's heart. I was her favorite boy. I was always the one they cut down Papa's best pants for. How many brothers did you have? Didn't have any, just three sisters. 
You ever seen my sister Eileen? My sister Eileen is a play, isn't it? Not mine. She's a sketch. <laughs> I mind one time... Oh, she... for goodness sakes, Mr. Oldtimer. Tell us what you've done. Why are the police after you? Yeah, make with a confession. Well, I don't know right where to start, kids. We'll start right at the beginning. Yeah. All righty. Well, sir, I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana. <laughs> one of two twin boys. Papa takes one look at us and says, let's keep this one and drown the other one. <laughs> and that's how I learned to swim. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Skip your first childhood and get to the second one, old-timer. We don't want the story of your life. I should say not. At 35 miles an hour, your autobiography would be pretty slow moving. <laughs> now, what'd you do to get the FBI after you? No, I've been un-American, daughter. I'm a traitor to my country. I'm just a dirty old Benefit Arnold. It was... <laughs> It was Benedict, and quit crying in my root beer. Come on, now talk. Well, sir, it's going to do me good to get it off my mind. So here it goes. I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana. An old crime against the cops, kids. Give me a handful of beans, daughter. What for? Got a bean shooter in my pocket. I'll shoot my way out. I don't want to take me on. I'll learn. Oh. <laughs> you talk like the bad half of a double feature. Scram into the dining room. No, 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 the other door. That's it. And if anybody comes in there, just lie down on a pickle dish and put on a dilly expression. <laughs> okay, McGee, let him in. Come in. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Billy Mills. Hello, Mom. Hello, Skip. Hi, Billy. Uh, won't you come down and sit in for a moment? I mean, uh, won't you take off your chair and uh, have a cold, Miss <laughs> Mills? <laughs> She's kind of nervous today, Bill. <laughs> she means, won't you give your hips a downbeat? Oh, thanks. <laughs> I just want to tell you I saw your new picture. Here we go again. Oh, did you really? How'd you like it, Billy? What do you mean, how'd I like it? I admitted I saw it, didn't I? Do I have to get nasty about it? A fine thing. Well, what an odd reaction. Yeah, I hope it ain't nationwide. Okay, old-timer, you can come out now. Oh, thanks, kids. Oh, you sure had me scared for a minute. Well, I don't know why. You've known Mr. Mills for years. Cousin him I was scared of, daughter. All the time I was in the dining room, somebody kept ringing the back door buzzer. We haven't got any buzzer on our back door. Oh, I must have, Johnny. Heard this play. Wait a minute now. Where were you in the dining room? Under the table, daughter. On the side Oh, the... you were sitting on the service buzzer. Uh, what's that? That's a signal for the maid to bring in the next course. If we had a maid. Uh, if we ate our dinner in courses... Only we don't have a maid, and we eat in the kitchen, and we call it supper. And after this, watch where you sit. Yeah. Now, before somebody else comes in, let's have your story. All righty. I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana. Poor but honest. No, man. no, 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 no. Skip that. What are the cops after you for? Eh? Hey? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, kids, you're going to despise me for it when I tell you. I guess I'm... Hello, folks. What's flying? Fire me. It's a cop. They got me. They're going to fry me. <laughs> Tell kids, hold him while I make a break for Oh, it. here, here. Calm yourself, Mr. Oldtimer. It's just Mr. Wilcox. You know him. Hey, what goes on here? Are you expecting a cop? Don't tell him, kids. Don't tell him. What do you think we are, stool pigeons? <laughs> He's in a little jam with the FBI, Harlow, but... <laughs> We want to talk it over a little before he does anything rash. Well, talk it over with me. I'm sort of an FBI man myself. What do you mean you're sort of an FBI man? Well, that's my job. FBI. Floors brightened instantly. Ah. Just pour a few drops of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on your linoleum, spread it around, let it dry, and presto. In 20 minutes or less, it's dried to a beautiful, sparkling finish. That's what I mean. I'm sort of a member of the kitchen police. Then you ain't... You ain't... You don't arrest people? <laughs> no, I don't, old-timer. I just try to get people to use glow coat to arrest the deterioration of their linoleum. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty important now, when we have to conserve what we have and make things last. Why, when I think what an important part all the Johnson products play in the conservation program, I almost feel I am a government agent. No, don't say that, Sonny. Don't say it. <laughs> What's the matter with him, Molly? He's white as a sheet. Better just leave him alone, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah. Duck along, Junior. We'll handle this. See you later. Nothing I can do to help? No, thank you. And don't tell anybody you saw him here. Why not? But because the police are going to drag out the throw net for him. That's why. <laughs> McGee, how many times must I tell you it's throw out the drag net? Goodbye, Mr. Wilcox. You sure I can't be of any help? No, no, no. Beat it, will you? Scram. All right, all right, but you don't have to push me. Jimmy, kids, 
I've never been so scared in my born day. Well, brace up. Don't be such a scaredy cat. You're just a bundle of nerves. No, I am not, Johnny. I'm as cool as a cucumber. I'm as... Hey, what was that noise? Oh, I dropped a piece of yarn on the rug. <laughs> no, you're not nervous. You're as high-strung as the George Washington Bridge. Now, get that story off your mind while we got a moment's peace, will you? Okay. Glad the kids... I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana. Where do I go, kids? Where do I go? Let me crawl under the rug. Oh, fine. We'll tell them it's a Brussels carpet and you're the sprout. <laughs> go on back into the dining room. And stay off of that bus. I will, kids. I will. Uh, come in. Oh, Mayor Latrivia. Come in, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hi, Latrivia. You're just the guy I wanted to talk to. Yes? Yes. I thought you'd cleaned up gambling in this town. I have. And if you know of any gambling joints, McGee, I hope you'll report them. Well, I'll give you one right now. How about the Poplis' restaurant? Heavenly day. Can you gamble in there? Brother, have you ever ordered their chicken croquettes? <laughs> no, stop it, McGee. What do you want to see us about, Mr. Mayor? I just wanted your opinion of this little verse. It's to be printed on the back of the city water bills and sent to everyone. Oh, let's hear it. It says, Remember what happened in 1920 when people starved in the midst of plenty? We ought to be much smarter now. If we want milk, let's feed the cow. Let's all be ready when this is over and start today to plant the clover. Let's all buy bonds and pay our debts, for the man what has is the man what gets. Well, my, my. I think that's wonderful, Mr. Mayor. Did you write that? Uh, no, no, it was sent in by a chap named Wimple, uh, Wallace Wimple. Oh, sure, old Wimp. We know him well, the trivia. <laughs> kind of a short, long fellow. <laughs> You, uh, you approve of the idea, then? Oh, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Splendid, splendid. Glad you like it. I thought I'd uh, get your slant on it as a couple of average citizens. <laughs> Try it on the dog, you know. <laughs> Take off your coat, the trivia. Uh, you can't before. call my wife a dog and get away with it. No, no, he didn't call me a dog, dearie. He's too much of a gentleman. He meant you. <laughs> He did, did he? Put up your deuce, Latrivia. Oh, stop it, McGee. It was just an expression. Don't be silly. So I'm being silly when I resent being insulted, eh? No, I'm a silly dog. Oh, you're not being logical, McGee. Well, what do you mean, Mrs. McGee? You called him a dog. A dog is man's best friend. You don't fight with your friends, do you? Ah, uh, this gets worse and worse. I'm not only a silly dog, but now I'm a friendly one. You don't think I can fight, huh? Oh, stop waving your paw. Uh, I mean your fist. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I think it is, too. You better go, Mr. Mayor, before he bites you in the leg. <laughs> Come on, McGee. Mother will get you a nice big ham bone. <laughs> that does it. The trivia, I'm going to beat you to a pulp for those insults. I'm going to pound you so flat I can mail you home. Oh, my. This ought to be very interesting. Well. Say, is it true that you are an intercollegiate boxing champion, Mr. Mayor? Quite true, Mrs. McGee. I'm going to hammer your odd-shaped skull till it rings like a... <laughs> It is? <laughs> is what? True. Is what true? <laughs> that you were the dance against Khalif? Aren't we being a bunch of rummies? <laughs> oh, they're flying off the handle like that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you dropped in, La Trivia. <laughs> Thanks. Good day, Mrs. McGee. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. And McGee. Huh? Let's go out some afternoon and uh, bark at automobiles. <laughs> The King's Men sing from Sita Lopez. He was a handsome young Irish lad. She was a Mexican beauty. And I might add romantically He was on duty A boy and a girl need the stars I can tell it in 64 bars His Irish heart went bingo When he saw the rose of Juarez So Timothy Cadigan, Michael O'Hadigan Fell for the rose of Juarez Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez Mandolins began to play Her lips were ready for a kiss And as they danced I heard him happily say New Jersey was never like this Then the wedding bells began to ring oh, And they rode away on a mule To prove a 
joke and a deer and hobo can drop in for a minute and you Meet Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, O'Toole Carrigan, Michael O'Harrigan, Finnegan, Hannigan, Patrick O'Fannigan, Mary the Pretty Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita Lopez. There is Teresa, Maria, Elisa, and Patsy, and Molly, and Mike. And there is Pedro, and Sancho, and Carlos, and Pancho, and Timothy Jr., and Spike. The coast is clear. You can come out now. Huh? Thanks, kids. Who was it? What did he want? It was the mayor. He wanted to get a free criticism on some poetry. Cheapskate. Well, bachelors always take advantage of people, McGee. They're called on so often to fill out a bridge table, they think every fourth person in the world is a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> well, be that as may or may not be or not. I want to hear what the old-timer here has got to say for himself. And it better be good, too, old-timer. Okay, Johnny. Well, sir, I was born in Terre Haute. Oh, hey, look, kids. I've been so scared today I ain't had a bite to eat. How's about a sandwich, Tudor? Why, of course, you poor thing. You come right with me. But, Molly, why can't we let him tell his story before... Hush, he... dearie, hush. The poor man's hungry. You can't fire a gun without loading it. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Before he shoots off his face, we got to feed it. <laughs> okay, but keep the kitchen door shut, and if anybody comes in, I'll stall them off. Oh, thanks, Johnny. Just give me a bowl of soup, daughter. I'll give you the whole treat. A bowl of soup, my clavicle. She ought to feed that guy a handful of animal crackers. If that monkey ain't lying, he's got his neck out like a giraffe. I wonder. Hi, mister. Huh? Oh, oh, hi, sis. I didn't hear you knock. I know it. I didn't knock. Why not? Hmm? Why didn't you knock? Well, gee, that would be silly, mister, when you got a doorbell to ring. <laughs> well, then why didn't you ring the doorbell? I couldn't reach it. Then why didn't you knock? Look, mister, we've been all over that. <laughs> if you want somebody to ring your doorbell, you just wait till Halloween. You just wait, I betcha. Oh, lay off, sis, lay off. Anyway, you said you couldn't reach it. I can, and Willie Toops boosts me up, I can. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> We tried it last night. Oh, you did, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of a dress rehearsal for Halloween, huh? Hmm? I said it was kind of a dress rehearsal. Only for me. Willie wears knickerbockers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sis, don't you know the real significance of Halloween? Hmm? Eh? What? What'd you say? What'd you hear? <laughs> Look, sis, every holiday is celebrated for a certain reason. Don't you know the real reason we celebrate Halloween? No. Why do we, mister? Why do we? Ah, that's better. An intelligent attitude like that deserves an intelligent answer. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> we celebrate Halloween, sis, because... Uh, well, because it always... <laughs> yeah. It's to commemorate the... <clears throat> yeah. Oh, it's too involved to go into right now. <laughs> I'm busy. You better run along. Have you got time for a poodle, hmm, have you? A what? A poodle. Where is it? Let me see it. You can't see it, mister. I tell it to you. You tell me? A poodle? Mm -hmm. What kind of double talk is this? <laughs> oh, you know, mister, a poodle is a little riddle you can't get through your noodle. <laughs> you want to hear it? No, but I don't know how I can get out of it. So go ahead. Why do they make toy banks in the shape of pigs? Oh, I'll sit still for that one, sis. Why do they make piggy banks? Because sailors wear a little white cap. <laughs> I, I don't get it. Well, gee, it's simple, mister. Huh? Sailors have little white caps, and the sea has little white caps, too. Yeah. And it makes the waves pretty, and my mother is pretty, too, and she just joined the waves, 
And the waves wash the beach, and the beach is full of sand. And so is spinach, and farmers grow spinach, and they have to get up at 5 o'clock, and that's twirly. And so is a pig's tail. <laughs> Longest silly twaddle I ever. Sailors have little twirly caps because spinach gets up at five o'clock with, with a pig full of sand. That don't make sense. Did I hear you talking to somebody, dearie? Yeah, a little girl from across the street. Uh, how you feel now, old timer? Fed up? You bet, Journey. Yeah, so am I, with the whole thing. So get busy now and tell your story. Yes, Mr. Old Timer. You know, we've been very patient with you. If we can help you with a clear conscience, we'll do it, but we won't be parties to anything crooked. Now go ahead and tell us. Well, it was like this, kids. Oh, I'm so ashamed. I wouldn't blame the FBI if they stood me up against a wall and shot me. Shot you for what? <laughs> well, I'm a hoarder. What? That's the way you hear it, daughter. I'm a hoarder. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I know it, Johnny. I know. I know. Yes, you know very well that hoarding causes shortages, and shortages cause prices to go up. It's greedy and selfish and un-American, and who do you think you are to need so much more of anything than somebody else? Pour it on, daughter. Pour it on. <laughs> I deserve it. But it all started so easy. You see, I had four of them to start with. Then I thought I'd get me a spare. Oh, ho. I begin to see. Then when I had me a spare, I, I thought I'd hide some away, and I knew a fellow that had given to me a, a 25% discount, and I couldn't resist it, and I kept buying them and buying uh, them. I got hundreds of them all over the house. Uh, <laughs> a fine thing, but the country is desperate for tires as it is now. You have to go. Tires? I ain't hoarding tires. Well, what are you hoarding? United States war bonds. <laughs> You think they'll shoot me, Johnny, with all the people wanting war bonds and me grabbing them up? I didn't know what I was doing. said by our enemies that we are a soft, wasteful people. Well, let them have what solace they can get out of that thought, because by now they've learned that we are anything but soft. And before we're through with them, they'll know that we were only wasteful because we have had so much of everything, such a high standard of living. But every day, in talking with friends and neighbors, you realize that we can certainly make whatever sacrifices we are called upon to make. Also, that it's probably very good for us to be more saving and learn to take better care of our things. I read a good many letters these days from housewives who tell us how grateful they are for Johnson's Wax in these days of conservation. How careful they are to protect their floors, furniture and woodwork, and many other things with regular applications of Johnson's Paste, Liquid, or Cream Wax. Mr. Wilkie on the radio last night? Yes, I did. What do you have to say? Made a very interesting speech. Says the world isn't as big as it used to be, and after this war, we all got to be neighbors. Oh, hands across the sea, you mean? Yeah. First arms and then hands. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Character of the old timer heard on this program was played by Bill Thompson. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for the Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program is reached you from Hollywood.
This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 